Hello, this is Dr. Christopher Heyer from Columbus, Ohio with the Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Center. I'm here to talk to you about the osteofiber trimmable fixation nail system and its use for tailor spondinectomies. The osteofiber trimmable fixation nail are a first of its kind implant material, stronger than cortical bone and allows for early bone attachment, bone ingrowth, and complete replacement. The hexagonal and barb trimmable nails can maintain compression provide stable fixation strength, and prevent rotation. The ability to trim the implants to any desired length enables customization to any patient anatomy and adaptability for a wide range of surgical techniques and indications in the forefoot, midfoot, and hindfoot surgeries. The osteofiber trimmable fixation nails are currently available in a 2.4 diameter with 30 millimeter and 50 millimeter lengths and a 4.0 diameter and 50 millimeter lengths. The nails are packaged with sterile disposable instruments, including two 1.1K wires, a cannulated drill bit, a depth gauge to measure the tunnel length, and an insertion sleeve and tamp to insert the implant within the tunnel. Sterile disposable instruments can be quite helpful in a surgery center setting uh, where we have limited storage capacity, we have high turnover of trays, and this just adds to a very efficient and clean implant process. So we'll make this approach from a dorsal lateral approach of the fifth metatarsal, uh, taking care to adequately reflect the soft tissue envelope, protecting the cutaneous nerves uh, in the area. A uh, self retainer is placed, and we make a uh, full thickness incision through the capsule uh, at the level of the MTP joint. Carefully reflect any adhesions plantarly at the plantar condyles, and we have good dissection and exposure for our osteotomy at this point. Uh, sagittal saw is used to resect any of the hypertrophic bone laterally, the excess ptosis there. Uh, sometimes there'll be some associated bursitis that'll be need to be addressed as well. This excess tectomy is done fairly perpendicular uh, to the long axis of the bone, just flattening off the side of the metatarsal head. Uh, various different osteotomies could be used at this point, whether you want a miniature scar for a chevron osteotomy. I typically favor a longer uh, mal type osteotomy, almost like a, an extended while at a much flatter angle. It starts from the distal metatarsal head and goes more proximally. You could do this from the dorsal approach, as I'm showing here, or even from the lateral approach. Um, you'll need the longer saw blade. And again, I favor that long osteotomy so you have a nice nice broad bone surface that you can translate in, uh, rotate on, and also can accept multiple fixation points if needed. This tends to be a very stable osteotomy because your bearing weight is actually closing it down. So here we uh, translate the metatarsal head more medially. Uh, you can use a Homan or other device to help you with that. And then here the two included 1.1 K wires uh, from the disposal set are inserted uh, and again this will add bone stability from the translated osteotomy and can serve as our pilot holes for our proposed osteofiber nails. So again this could be either as temporary fixation um, for additional control or if you decide to place two implants uh, you can use both of those as pilot holes. Uh, bone reduction clamp is useful here if you need uh, to maintain compression against the nail. Again, the idea of the fixation nails are to maintain the compression that you achieve either through the K-wires or through a bone reduction clamp. Uh, we've drilled uh, bicortically. Uh, now we're going to insert the depth gauge and hook the distal cortex. We'll read this line to line. This is designed to be just slightly bicortical, uh, so you want just a little bit of the implant, proud dorsally and plantarly to achieve good fixation. And then we're bringing the inserter onto the field with the 2.4 millimeter nail. And I find it's uh, helpful to actually have the nail just a little proud sticking out of the end of the inserter. It does have a tapered tip, so that really lets you kind of get it started into the bone tunnel a little bit easier. Just give some gentle taps with your mallet. Inserter is translucent, so you'll be able to see the measurements through the guide. So we have redundant uh, portion of nail sticking out, uh, which is, uh, again, the difference in the measurement. I think we measured an 18 and this is a 30 implant. So you can just trim that right off flush and then you can use that additional 
um, portion of the nail for a second fixation device if you need. Uh, in this case, uh, we uh, stressed the osteotomy and found that a single implant was uh, very stable and didn't find the need for another implant, but that could have easily been done again at that location of the second K-Wire uh, if you wish. At this point, any redundant bone would be trimmed off uh, and then your deep capsular closure and uh, subcutaneous and skin closure per your normal uh, routine. Uh, typical post-op protocol for us would be, um, depending on the patient, sometimes we'll allow heel weight bearing uh, right away in a surgical shoe if this is the only procedure that's been done. Uh, frequently this is done with other procedures, uh, so there'll be non-weight bearing for five days in a Jones splint and then typically transition to weight bearing in a boot uh, starting one week after surgery. Hopefully you found this useful to uh, see how the osteofiber uh, trimmable fixation nail system is used uh, for correction of a uh, bunionette or Taylor's bunion deformity. Thanks for your attendance.